back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the team of the year for the League of Ireland season. I'm joined by Ryan Legrew, Rory Devlin from Domestic Ireland, which you may know from Twitter, and uh, Shane Dawson from Air Sport, which you may know from being the powerhouse that goes around interviewing all the, the players and that from uh, Air Sport games, where it's League of Ireland to Ireland under 21s and so on. I'm sure you do other sports as well, but uh, delighted to be joined. And have this four-man panel, obviously, myself, Paul and Neil. And, um, yeah, we'll get straight into the team of the year. You have the PFAI yeah. team of the year, and we're going to make our own team of the year. So, if you take away, Roy. It was Alan Manis, Sean Gannon, Lee Grace, Sean Hoare, Sean Cavanagh, Danny Mandrew, Chris Shields, Jack Bourne, Michael Duffy, David Parkhouse, and Pat Hoban. Okay. Well, see, p- people were moaning and saying this and that on um, online and whatever. So we said we'll do our own team of the year. The lads were, were happy enough to come and join me and discuss it. So we'll have our own little debates about different positions and so on. We're going to go with a 4-3-3 uh, formation. And I suppose we'll start things off with um, in goals. Now, Shane, who would you be going for in goals um, if you're a betting man? Um, for me personally, I think James Talbot uh, has done enough to get into my team of the year. I know Alan Manis was into the PFAI team of the year. and In terms of quality of goalkeeper, he's smashing McGinty and Sligo, smashing goalkeeper as well. Um, and, you know, it's very hard to look past Gary Rogers as well because of how successful the Dock have been and the longevity of Gary Rogers and how consistent he has been. But for what James Talbot has done and what Bohemians have done to come in his first season in the league, to go to make the transition from GA over into football um, and to do so seamlessly and to be a leader. And what Bose needed that because when Shane Supple left, there was talk of a crisis in goal and, and who's going to replace um, Supple because he was such a leader on and off the pitch and how influential he was in that team. And James Hall has been able to step up and being able to step up not only to fill Shane Supple's boots, but then to be a commanding figure in a relatively successful both, both side who have chopped and changed their back four throughout the season. I don't know if any team has done it as much as they have between Pender, Finity, Barry, uh, Lee, Paddy Kirk's coming in as well. So there wasn't a setback four there, yet they've been so defensively solid that I think James Hobbit has to get a lot of credit for that. Yeah, Rory, as the balls man. Yeah, well, obviously a bit biased, but I put Talbot in as well. Um, kind of... I suppose Gary Rogers and Alan Mann's all a great season as well, but the fact that the impact that Talbot had, especially in the kind of the first or second round of fixtures where mm-hmm. he kept about nineteen mm-hmm. sheets in eleven games and a lot of those games were one or two mm-hmm. goal difference, so it, he really p- picked up a lot of points and really kind of drove us on for the start of the season and second after the second half of the season as well. He um, I suppose he carried it on and there was games where we really needed him to step up. Uh, as uh, Shane mentioned, we've had a a lot of back four changes, so that he was he was always a constant he played in every game for us so no, he was he'd be my pick anyway okay and uh, Ryan again, yourself again I'm not biased but I went for Alan Manis um, again I couldn't really complain if, if Talbot got out of Rodgers because again there with Dundalk, Dundalk success I was half expecting Rodgers to get it again um, and it wasn't him I was expecting Talbot to get it just as it's, as it's already been mentioned his fourth season in the league um, while I was kind of chopping and changing their back four um, he's, he's definitely been a vital part in, in their revival as such but I think what Manis I mean, if, if you look back a year and a half ago, the Rovers goalkeeper situation, let's let's kind of be real here, it was a shambles. We were picking between Chinchinski and Horgan. There was a lot of, um, the, we were conceding a lot of really poor goals. And I think since Manus has come in, he's really kind of shaped up the back four. I mean, it, the centre-halves, I thought I was, I remember interviewing Lee Grace and he spoke glowingly about Alan, just the way he commands his back four and he probably goes about his business in a quite, very quiet manner. Probably that's why he goes on notice a bit, but um, I think this season again, I think he got twenty one clean sheets, which is a club record, and hopefully it'll be twenty two on Sunday. But no, it, it's um, I just think with some of the saves he's made this season, I mean, if you look trace back to Apollon away, is one that stands out in the first half. I mean, I know we went out, but I mean we came back into it in the second half, took took them extra time, but it wasn't for Manus, it could have been the game would have been over at half time, and just in general, he he goes on notice and. He was never going to get a player there with Jack Bourne there, but with the way, with the way, um, with the way it is. But I think looking at Al, he was definitely a contender. And um, but again, I, that's why I went from. But it, again, it could have been any of them. Like there was there was a special mention as well to McGinty of Sligo. I thought yeah, the end of the season. Yeah. He's he's done well, and even the likes of Brendan Clark has, has come in. He, I thought he's gotten he's better as the year, he's gotten better as the years have gone on. But I went for Manus. But yeah, I'd say Talbot and Rogers were probably. 
a little bit disappointed, but no, I went for Manus. Yeah. Uh, for me, personally, uh, I look at Gary Rogers, uh, ever-present, most clean sheets this season. People in Aggie, it's, it's the back four in front of him, but, you know, he has to be the keeper that gets those clean sheets. And, and I, I do think, probably at times, because Dundalk is so well, he or do so well, sorry, he doesn't get the probably credit he deserves. He's been... You know, you look at the European run and whatever, he was he was brilliant throughout the season. I don't remember making really a mistake, neither of the other two keepers. And I do take in um, what you said about Alamas. Do you think about the, the the kind of dodgy keepers they had before he came in? And, you know, Rovers were slipping down the league. You know, Pizzuno came in at one point last season. He looked solid. Obviously, he left, but Manus came in. And since he's, a, he's came in, Rovers have, have had a pretty decent defensive record since he's came in. Um, but for me personally, I'd be going with uh, Gary Rogers. But we're kind of outvoted here anyway. So James Hall does the the two votes here anyway. So regardless of what me and you choose, um, he's in there. But rightly, like look as you said, Shane Supple, a tremendous, tremendous player, and for someone to come in, um, like James Talbot and to do so well because they were panicking. What are they gonna do? And you look at the season they had and, and where they finished. They're in the European sp- places. They finished third. So um, hats off to them. They really, uh, I suppose, overachieved. And those uh, James Talbot was a it was a key part of that. So James Talbot is uh, the Irish Football Fan TV Team of the Year goalkeeper. So um, I suppose we move on to right back, and I don't think anyone's going to have a uh, any argument for this one. Um, we'll have a couple of honourable mentions, I'm sure. But Sean Gannon, uh, I think it's seven league titles out of eight. Am I correct in saying that? Mm-hmm. Um, he's just and again I talk about Gary Rogers being an ever present, but Sean Gannon. I, t- I just, uh, you know, he actually scored a crucial goal against Rovers uh, in Tallis Stadium, and he's just such a vital player. Um, it boggles my mind how he hasn't been over in England at all. Um, I, 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 I struggle to think why he hasn't been, but uh, have you said to add about Sean, or, or are we just happy to settle on that? No, I think it's a, it's self-explanatory that it would be Sean, but I think even now, it's not just a case of all the league titles he's won and being in teams here now, he's flirting with that side of being the best right back that the league's ever had who mm. in my opinion would probably be on here yeah, but he's getting to that standard now and he's getting to that level and that you know, real permanent iconic figure of he, he you know being one of the first names that you put on the team which is rare for a defender or a defensive a player but he would be one that there wouldn't be any argue, arguments about and I think that shows the talent and the consistency of that throughout the year is that he would be one of your first names on, on teams of the year throughout the years. Yeah, Rory? Um, I think the fact that you mentioned he's had seven or seven and about last two titles and he's only getting his prime now. Yeah, he's only 28, I think. Yeah, and I, I, I've heard like rumours that he's the people that from England are coming over to watch him in the cup final. Yeah, Burn, yeah, I heard John yeah. just coming over. But, you know, it's all hearsay. Yeah. Um, the fact that he's been so consistent over the last few years, he's been ever present in the Dundalk team. Um, I suppose there has been a lot of chopping and changing in the especially the dock back too over the last few years. Is that for him to kind of continually, I suppose, perform at that the highest level and to keep to keep winning with the dock kind of you know hats off to him and he deserves to be in the team of the year. Yeah, no, no, no case for uh, Derek Penn there, no. As much as I'd love to give it to him, he's he's he missed the part of the season there with injury, yeah. so I can't really. It's no, it's just no shoe, unfortunately. Maybe Andy Lyons in the future. What about yourself? Yeah. I, I, I I'd say a special mention to uh, Joey O'Brien. Yeah, he did fill there, in. Yeah, you have him in there, but I have to say he filled in very well at right back for a centre back, and he was aging a, a bit. I would say, you know, um, if he's watching, no offence. Um, but uh, you know, jo- Joey O'Brien, he wasn't. He's, he's don't think of him as a as a rifle and to come in when Ethan, think, Bo- Ethan Boyle got injured for a large I think part of when, season, when yeah. Joey's injured or not fit Rovers miss him so no but I had him in there as a special mention but I think for Gannon he's just Mr. Consistent really I mean seven league titles hindsight's a wonderful thing in football but looking back for out kind of kicking ourselves we let him go but then again he probably needed first team football and it's important now that Pat's let him go as well to Dundalk and, but yeah like I mean I think he he is if he's not there yet, I think in the next couple of years, if he stays in the league now, he still has a. I think he's in his peak now, so if he is going to move, it'll, you'd imagine it would be in this upcoming window. But um, no, he's he's, he's Mister Consistent. Um, he is the best right in the league. Um, I don't know if he's the best of all time, but if he continues in the way he is, I'd say he he will be up there, one, mm. one of the best ever. I think in another season or two, if he stays yeah. in the league, he'd, he'd be definitely. But uh, as Shane said, on here he would be my my case for that at the minute. But um. All right, so that's the right back. So we've Talbot and Gannon. So we're gonna we're gonna go left back now. Um, so 
me personally, I would go Dane Massey. Um, last year, I, I left him out for, for Darryl Lee because Bowes finished the season so strongly. He wasn't happy about that. But um, I just think, you look at even the, the other night, he's scoring goals, he's, he's making a difference. He's playing in, front, in, in a team there with um, that got 23 clean sheets as well. I know early on in the season, it was kind of him and Jarvis, they were interchanging a good bit. Uh, but kind of after the European phase kind of filtered out, it was just Massey then for, for, for the rest of the season. He's been solid and ever present in that team as well. And I think probably is a little bit underrated um, if you look at the rest of the team he never really I suppose gets to mention because he came in there as a captain and Garton's not there as well so I do think for my team of the season you want leaders in there and for me I think Dane Massey gets my vote for that position but uh, Shane we'll, we'll go what you have um, I'd go with Kieran Cole of Derry uh, I think what Decky Devine has done up in Derry this year has been immense in, in really <sighs> lifting the spirits on and off the pitch and really kind of building a foundation there of a solid club and really trying to bring them back to the heights that they should be playing at. You know, you look at the other contenders, Dane Massey's done exceptionally well, um, but I think there was a lot of chop and change with Dean Jarvis. Uh, with Bowes, I don't think Darryl Lee's had a great season. Mm. I think Paddy Kirk's come in and Paddy Kirk's been excellent wherever he may be next year. Um, and then in Rovers as well, Sean Cavan obviously made the PFAI team Trevor Clark was, was doing well and obviously he's gone now as well and Kavanagh has stepped up and he's made that spot his own I know he's very versatile but I, I think Kavanagh, um to be fair has kind of come in similar to uh, I talk about Dan Massey kind of filling in from that point of the season I think Kavanagh had a similar from that point yeah. I suppose maybe just after Europe yeah. and Kavanagh was an ever present and was very good yeah he was because uh, uh, Clark the, went to Rodham then didn't yeah he, so. like, and you've got that versatility which on, but I just think it's an, it's not a token gesture of selecting a Derry player, but I, they deserve to be there, and and some of the players deserve to be there. You look at Gilchrist and Toll, the two centre halves have done exceptionally well at, at Derry, and we'll get onto that. They didn't make my team now for this, but I think Cole's been consistent and he's skillful, and he, and he's just a good defender as well. As Dave Massey is a leader, but I wouldn't be. For me, I wouldn't be selecting players just to, to be leaders off the pitch and on the pitch. I'd be selecting who's the best at their position in the league, in my opinion. That's Kieran Cobb. Yeah. But yeah, I think you've won player of the year for Derry as well, actually. That's worth noting. Um, Rory, yourself? Um, personally, I'll go for Dan Massey as well. Um, I do have Kieran Cobb written down also because... And went under the radar at Derry. Not think, don't think. Derry. I think I think that's a, I think that is a thing though, is because Derry aren't seen so much because obviously they're they're up, yeah. up the north. Um, it's hard for us maybe to see them as much. And when they do come down to Dublin, I do, I don't find the games that I've been to this year. I don't really find them performing. Whereas well, they're obviously up in the Brandy well. They have been amazing. I haven't even, I haven't been to the Brandy well yet. Um, this season to to see them really in their pump, you know and. You know, I, a lot of people were, were giving out that you know, when the team of the year that none of these players, Tall and Call, got mentions um, for the for the thing. So I, I'm glad you brought them up, Shane. But um, you were saying about Call and uh, not getting mentioned. Yeah. I just think that that may be the reason why uh, is that they're not seen enough. Maybe you know, TV or whatever. Have a word with air. Um, <laughs> but you know, it. I I just look at that and I think that's the reason maybe why they don't get enough credit. Maybe that they deserve because you look at they finished fourth, and they were tipped to finish maybe not relegation but you know mid table ish. I mean, when I've seen Darian Daly, man, like they've they've been able to like come and they they get a goal and then they, I suppose they'd almost show show shot but they wouldn't but they'd be defending really well and it'd be they'd be so hard to break down. Um, I didn't get up to Derry this year, so I didn't. I can't really tell tell how how good they played up there. Um, but for me, Massey, especially as you mentioned after the second under the second half of the season, he kicked on he. Certified didn't knock the fence and they, they pushed on from there and they, they won the title with ease in the end. Yeah. Uh Ryan? Yeah, I went for Sean Kavanagh. Um I just no think, surprise there. No, no, no but eleven here. No, but, <laughs> uh, I think just in, in general I think I think every week it's it's at least an eight out of a ten from him. He's very consistent. Yeah, he has been very yeah, good for I think just I I know that Calm would have been up there, but again, it's it's kind of hard to say when you you play each other maybe four times a year, and generally that's only when you see them. You, you can't really take much from kind of highlights. Exactly, yeah. But uh, no, I just went for Kavanagh from what I've seen. Um, obviously last year I would I put Lee in there, um, but I just think uh, a few balls fans have been saying maybe he wasn't at his best this season, so you kind of have to take their word for it. But I just went for Kavanagh, just very consistent, um, never lets us down, and um, yeah, yeah, just really I think he was definitely a contender for player of the year there. I think I think Lee set a standard so high last season that maybe um, 
he kind of he's paying for it a little bit this year. Obviously, got injured towards the end, but uh, I think he's he set the standard so high. Yeah, he hasn't had a bad season. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. In, in any way, but yeah, I and he's still getting into twenty ones as well. Yeah. You know? like, um, but just on Cavanagh as well, I think maybe not in terms of Rovers anymore. I don't think he's underrated at the, at the club anymore. But in term, generally, in terms of the league, I, th- I thought for one once he went, probably he probably went a bit underestimated. Such his name wasn't really up there when you're talking about kind of the best split players in the league. So I'm, I was happy enough to see him get the recognition recognition that I feel he deserves personally. Yeah. Okay. Centre backs. Uh, so that's it then. Uh, Dane Massey gets the gets the vote. Um, he got two votes unfortunately for Shane and. Uh, Yourself? Oh wait, how, uh, you went for call? Yeah, sorry, I was thinking you went for um, Kevin as well. Okay, so Dane Massey, Sean Gannon, James Talbot. So centre backs. Um, who would you be going for, Shane? Um, Horan Grace. So to very similar to the PFI team. Um, Dundalk again have been exceptional, um, and they've just got they've got two players for each position, and you know I think Garden's done really well. He, Pushing on a bit now, that Cleary's done exceptionally well. Mm. Um, or you know, for me, just just edges it. Um, just any time I've seen Dundalk play, he's just stood out, stood out, and he's really kind of just led led from the front as well. Um, and he's been solid. And Lee Grace as well. I think Pico Lopez has done well for Rovers this year. Um, getting the international call up, but I, I think again Lee Grace as well has just just stood out. Um. And you look through all the teams in the leagues, I think Bowles is very solid defence as well, but again, too much up and changing for me. So to have that consistency um, and solidity and people you can rely on, and I think the, the two boys would be the two centre-halves that you would rely most on in the league. Yeah, uh, um, I think that's worth noting as well. As, uh, kind of since Mans came in, I think League Race performance have gone up another level and he's been fantastic ever since even last season when Mans came in. Uh, yourself, Rory? Uh, I went with Horan Grace as well. Um, starting with Grace, the partnership with him and Pico have formed has uh, like really solidified the, the Shamrock Rovers' defence and he's been stand out for most games. Uh, going on to Hoare, um, I think he has been found out a few times this year. Um, I when I watched him in Dalem there the two or three weeks ago, he was like, kind of just pushed off the ball by right and right scored and that like that that, that kind of that put us two up and that kind of almost killed the game in a way. But um Sure he had the league wrapped up at that point. Sure he had the league wrapped up, but still he's still trying to fight for position in the, in the cup final, isn't he? Yeah, no, I'm not um guessing. but especially with like Daniel Cleary there with Brian Garton there and Andy Boyle, for him to keep his place shows a testament to him and they must perform well in training as well as on the pitch. Yeah, and he scores big goals in big games as well, you know, not just to mention his defensive capabilities, but he does score goals. I'm, I'm, I'm certain he scored a goal against Rovers, didn't he? Um, this season? Yeah. I don't think so, not this no, season. I could be wrong. It's, it's, it's maybe last season. It was a game I was at recently and he scored. You can rely on him to get, to, to get a few goals, which is yeah. what you want as well, to have that presence in both boxes. So, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so to have Hor and Grace like that, you know, you can hang out and then to get a couple of goals as well, which is only going to improve a team. Yeah. Um, yourself? I went for Hor and Lopez. Um, oh, for, controversial. For Hor, I just think, um, again, Dundalk, I think, I said that Shane said two, two players for every position. There's probably an argument that all of their back four could have been in there. As some said, you mean, saw Massey kind of getting in there. Um, but again, I, I just think um, at the heart of their back four, I think he's played probably the most games at out of them. I mean, I mean, I think clearly he's been in and out of the team a little bit. Same with Garland. I just think with Sean Howard, I think he just adds something to them. Um, uh, last season, I, I thought maybe I had question marks about him, but I think he's actually gotten better this season. Um, that's just from what I've seen. But um, So yeah, I'd have him in there. And I went for Lopez instead of Grace because although I think Grace is a better player, I just think this season alone, Lopez had the better season. Um, a lot of Rovers fans were probably maybe writing them off a little bit. Well, I won't say writing them off, but maybe were hoping for another centre half. But in fairness, he's kind of proved a few doubters wrong. Um, I said with his, with his international call. Could you say that maybe Lee Grace maybe made 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 Lopez a better player? Maybe. Yeah, I'd, I'd argue. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good argument as well. I think Lee Grace last year was was. One of, if not the best center back in the league, and he, and he got our player there. But I just think with Lopez, he's come on leaps and bounds this season. He's chipped in with some very important goals in Europe, especially. Um, get way to Brand, and even in the home games against uh, Brand and Apollon, he was excellent. But um, now I just think 
I, although I think Grace is a better player, I just think if they're just doing this season alone, I thought Lopez had the better season, so that's why I put him in there ahead of Grace. But yeah, they'll have Grace in the special missions. Mm. Well, yeah, you, you make a good argument. And I do think players like uh, Daniel Cleary are a little bit hard done by, but you, you talk about an ever present in the team. And I think Grace and Hort, to be fair, have been an ever present. And you spoke about Andy Boyle and the competition in the, the Dundalk defence. That um, the fact that Hor has been consistent throughout, and even last season, you know, he, he's just such a solid player. I remember he went right back for a couple of months, and he and he won right back of the year, and also just that just goes to show he's he's just how good he is. You know, he can fill in other positions if he needs to be, and I do think maybe <coughs> other players on the um, the dog team like Daniel Cleary, he's unbelievable, and you get into any other team, and he's maybe just a little bit unfortunate. Obviously, Garton's fantastic as well. Probably didn't play enough. For me to 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 do, I I would have Daniel Cleary as a more more of an honor you mentioned than than Garton myself. But that's that's the um, the centre backs as well. I know Hor and Grace myself. So that's three votes for Hor and Grace. Um, Eve Lopez and uh, Hor. Don't you? So Hor's uh, clean sweep. But we'll go into midfield then. Uh, we're gonna go with a mil- midfield three. We we'll just have two centre mids and a number ten. So if you want to work it out in a three, or you can go position by position, it's totally up to you guys. Uh, Shane, I'll let you decide um, what you want to do. Um, well, I've gone with a four-two-three-one formation as, as such. Okay. So I have two holding midfielders, um, or two centre mids, I suppose. Uh, Chris Shields and Greg Sluggett. Um, I think Shields, again, you're going into the Gannon explanation and, and, and the Hor and Grace explanation of just being reliable and being Mr. Consistent. And I don't really buy into this all, oh, he does the unseen work. Like, what's the unseen work? He does work that is his job to do. He breaks up the play. He links the play. And when Dundalk play without Chris Shields in it, they are a far inferior team. Because, he, you know, he has that, um, that presence as well. But he does a simple thing right all the time. And he's a smart, intelligent footballer. And, and that's why Chris Shields would be um, in my team and would be captain of my team as well. Um, and I think you'd do well not to fit him in the team of the year, to yeah. be fair. Um, and alongside Greg Slogan, I think, again, um, I was looking at Gerardo Bruna maybe from, from Derry as well. But I think UCD, in, in, in my opinion, UCD wouldn't be in the position they were in if they um, didn't lose Slogan. They, they would be a lot challenging a lot more. They would have been up there a lot more. Um, and I think, again, similar to Shields, he's someone that you can rely on. And if you're playing a 4 2 3 one with two holding midfielders, two centre mids, whatever way you want to frame it, that, again, that's a player that will be... He won't go hiding. And he'll always step up to the mark and he'll always perform for you. And he can nick a goal or two if, if needs be as well. But, you know, to do his job right, the two of them together, I think, would be uh, exceptional. Yeah. Me personally, if I was going um with with two sitters, I'd have Greg Balger and Chris Shields. Uh, I think Greg Balger this season has gone up a level to kind of when he was at Cork. Um, last season wasn't a great season for him, but I just I watched him this year and he's been absolutely fantastic. And you look at other midfielders in around there, Aaron McIniff as well. Probably doesn't get the credit he deserves because of Jack Byrne. Hmm. Um, Benson that, as well. Benson, Benson yeah. Injured, yeah. He, okay, you look a little bit like him. Um, I think it's a compliment. Uh, Wish I had his brains. But um <laughs> yeah, like Benson and, and as you say, Mac McInef and Bulger have been excellent, Bron Finn's been decent as well. Yeah, um, he has, yeah. you know, it's tough leaving out Rovers players because I think on paper Rovers you know they, they would challenge Dundalk in terms of having the best team on paper nearly with the talent they do have. Definitely so, midfield, anyway. Yeah, like it is tough leaving them out. With the additions in in the in the window, maybe at the start it's easy we didn't have the strength and depth. And you saw that when we were down a couple of injuries and suspensions in Oriel, how how weak our squad was, how weak our bench was, but I think since we've added in the players in July, yeah, I think it's it's great work and the likes, yeah. yeah. Gary um, O'Neill as well, I think. Gary O'Neill will grow as well. Yeah, he's he, he, when he gets a bit of game time. Next <laughs> season, will I think be. when he has came in, he's done well though. Yeah. To be fair to really him, has. um, have you, I know, and I know a lot of Bulls fans will be screaming at the at the screen here about Connor Livingston. Livingston, sorry. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, he's he's taken over from JJ Lunny's role. Like, he's, he's just stepped in. It's almost like for like. Uh, he came back from Wolves, kind of relatively unknown. Uh, it's kind of a testament to Keith Long about how, how his recruitment uh, how how good his recruitment is. Um I wouldn't have Levinson in there either. Um I think there's been there's been better there's been better players. Um I mean I went I went with Shields, Mandrew and Byrne. Um I mean Shields is uh, kind of 
As a midfield three? Yeah, midfield three. Okay. I mean, you probably have Byrne or Mandry kind of a little bit further up in the park, but for the, for the sake of the video, I've gone with three in the middle. Um, Shields, kind of, you've already explained, he's, he's there, he's as solid as ever. Um, Mandry and Byrne, kind of their, their, first, their first year in the league. I think, I think to be fair, and I've watched Chris Shields against Jack Byrne a lot this season, I think people talk about how good Jack Byrne is, but I think every time Shields has probably played against him, he's, he's kept him quiet enough. And I think... Shields has an argument probably if he added goals to his game he'd probably be the best midfielder in the league but he would probably need to add goals to a game but it's not really his position because he's, he's more sp specifically like it's like saying Kante should score more goals for Chelsea he's that specific centre defensive midfielder he just sits in front of the back for a break but he also he also do, like he does a lot in terms of uh, creating play bringing the ball out from the back and, and doing a lot and I do think he's he's got an argument to probably be in the best midfielder in the league well, when right they knock, now, anyway. when they knock down the ball he kind of he sits in front of the back four and kind of mops up everything but when they do he drops back into the centre back position so it allows uh, either Hoare and Cleary or whoever is playing with them to kind of push wider and then allow Massey and Gannon to push up the field as well mm. so he, he allows he allows that to happen, um, and he he can he can break the press as well. If players come up, he can dribble through and pass it out then to the wide areas. Yeah, well, uh, who who would you be going for? I went for right. I actually went for a mid midfield three of Manjo Shields and Duffy. I think what Manjo again it's his first season in the league, um, scored some really good goals. Um, I think. I know maybe discipline. Hang on, so you're going midfield three. Yeah, I kind of went like Mandrew, Shields, looking, and then I had Bourne above them, like in, kind of behind the strikers. Okay, well, if you go, no, because we're going to have three, we're going to have a uh, winger either side of the striker, so you can have your Mandrew and Duffy's up there if you want. Yeah, then So I'll, we're going to go, we're, we're kind of going like a midfield th three. Then I'll so go. So you have two centre mid and a, and a, and a number well, 10. Well, Shields is definitely up there, and he's, as I said, he's, he just does his job well. Like I think again, he's been at the heart of that Dundalk team. He's been a regular in it and a regular, um, and yeah, I think he's probably earned his place in that particular team. And then what? We'll just will I go with Mandrew? Will I stick with him or? Uh, I I'd be more inclined to have him as a the, wide player. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest, maybe on that right wing spot. But then um, it's then probably just then born. I think just does, do I, have, I don't think I have to say much about him really. He's yeah. been, been excellent. Uh, Probably messed up a bit with the formation as such, but now that that was my initial selection. But yeah, well, we have. So I think Jack Burrow and Chris Shields are, are, are definitely in there. Um, so Jack Burrow is my number ten. I only mentioned my two holding midfielders. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah but, so uh, but I think I think everybody knew at that point yeah. that he was going to be in there at, <laughs> yeah. at some point. I, I would think. have had I would have had Bulger in there had he had the full season, but I think at the start of the season he was probably one of our best players. But then I think maybe picked up an injury, held held him back for a couple of weeks, and then the son of O'Neill is kind of. Put him down a bit, but again, I think for Sunday's cup final, it's a big call who starts Bulger or O'Neill. I'd be inclined to go for Bulger, but I think O'Neill will Bulger start. Has, has, the, has the experience, yeah, that's, that's why I'd, I'd go. But I think O'Neill will start myself. But again, if, if, if Bulger had had the full season, he would have been one in there. But I just I think with the maybe the recent ones, he hasn't played as so much, so that's probably why he, he didn't make it. But he's in special mentions, okay? So your you know, I suppose your two center mids are Byrne and Shields, yeah. Okay. Um, my my centre, my defensive midfielders would be Bolger and Shields. Your probably Shields and Byrne as well. Okay, yeah. but and then Madrid a bit further up. Okay. Um, Shields and Slogger. So okay. Chris Shields will make it. Chris Shields is in there. Um, midfield boys. See, the thing is, Jack Burns plays as a number 10, so I wouldn't be having him as a defensive midfielder or a centre midfielder. I would have him as the, as Mick McCarthy said, I don't want you picking the ball up from the defence, I want you to be just behind the striker. So I think Byrne should be that number 10, if I'm being honest, and you should have a centre mid alongside or just in front of Chris Shields. So um, obviously you have Sloggett, mm -hmm. I've got Greg Bolger, so it's kind of between you two, then you're going to have partner and Chris Shields, otherwise you're going to have Jack Burns as a defensive midfielder, which is, I know it's a fancy land here, but it's not really going to work. There's no reason why we can't have one defensive mid. Okay, but well, then you have to pick two other centre mids. Um, well, Mo Byrne and Mandrew have actually played in centre mid this year, at yeah. times, especially when key wards come on and Mandrew's drop back a little bit. Yeah, I'd be more inclined to have uh, Mandrew as a, like a right wing type of position. To very, very rarely played in the wing this year. Mm. Okay, well then that well, that's the way you're gonna have it. Then it's gonna be Mandrow as the number ten, Burn Shields in there with Jack Byrne playing a little bit higher than um, <laughs> yeah. than uh, Chris Shields. So there you have it. Uh, that's the midfield three then. Um, yeah, onto the, the the front three then, and I I don't think anybody 
um, can look any further than Michael Duffy on the left wing. I, 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 I do think it's worth noting as well that um, I suppose we didn't really touch too much on Jack Byrne there, but the fact that he was in a, since Mick, Mick McCarthy's come in, he's he's picked Jack Byrne. He's been in and around the squad. I know he, he has he didn't make the final match day squad in some games, but the fact that he's been representing the league and doing so well, I mean he came on and he, he had that game against Bulgaria as well. I know it's nothing to do with the League of Ireland um season itself, but the fact that he was there representing and he done so well, I think it's testament to him and he's just been brilliant this season. I think if anybody hasn't gone to watch him this year, I think you're missing out. Um hopefully he's in he's in the league uh, again next season whether that remains to be seen we don't know but I would encourage maybe anyone who hasn't seen him to get down to the Aviva next Sunday and uh, check him out because he's just he's an unbelievable player that pitch will suit him down to the ground as well the big pitch you saw that against Bulgaria yeah and the fact is that it's not on uh, AstroTurf as well yeah but um, front three left wing Michael Duffy another player who probably deserves a bit of international recognition now, I don't know what the story is regarding the um eligibility or you know, the, the, the change over from Northern Ireland to Ireland I don't know what the story is but it, 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 it's kind of it boggles my mind the fact that you know Burns in there um, getting called up but Michael Duffy seems or can't seem to get into a get call up or anything like that and it's just kind of makes me wonder why um, you look at the goals you obviously scored that goal up in Oriel to win the league basically uh, big moments and big games. He's always involved in it. whatever Dundalk are doing well. He's always involved in it. But uh, Shane, what, what what are your thoughts? Uh, left wing. Is there any honourable mentions for left wing? Um, I don't think other than Michael Duffy is just a front runner. Um, well, I again since I had Slogan in, um, I would have had Jack Byrne and Duffy as kind of the two wide men playing off a uh, number nine. But I think Junior. Um, Top goal scorer in the league. Uh, we'll, we'll get to who I have in number nine, but I think I could play him out wide if, if needs be. Probably on the left, but I don't think he usurps Michael Duffy anyway, so you might have to shove one of them out to, out to the right. you will be popular up in Derry anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, just in terms of, of, of quality and skill, um, and, he, and he's the league's top goal scorer as well, um, I think, you know, he, he definitely would be my biggest. He'd be first sub, basically, on my team. But I don't think you can look past Michael Duffy again. He, he's your your big man for the big moments, um, and he has that bit of that just bit extra that, that that bit of skill, that bit of class that I think is lacking in the league um, in a lot of teams. That you know he just brings it up another level, um, and for that I think again it, it's similar to, to Gannon that he's just a dead surfer for a team of the year. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on in your analysis there, Roy. Um, yeah, I think when, when, when Duffy doesn't play for Lundalk, like he he's on the bench or whatever, he, he they struggle to kind of create and like he has that spark when he's on the pitch, he has the you know, the kind of the burst of acceleration that can get him past the player. And then when he gets into position to finish he, he always does so. Um he's been a constant for the Lundalk team over the last like, two or three seasons as well. So, you know, he's he's, he's always gonna be there, I think. He's probably gonna be in everyone's team of the year. Yeah, you mentioned earlier on that they have two players for every position, but they don't have two Michael Duffy's. Yeah. So I think that I think that shows more than anything, you know. Uh, yeah, the biggest com- the biggest compliments I can pay Michael Duffy is that I hate playing against him. You know, it's he, he's the player that we're gonna have to watch out for on Sunday. For them, in my, in my opinion, but now he's, he's just he's excellent, really. And again, I know you talk about Jack being in the squad. I think last season, I think. Um, O'Neill was maybe I think he was pondering about calling them up, but I don't know why. Yeah, there was a yeah, there was period, a lot of yeah. thing, yeah, the eligibility thing. But now, if he, if he stays in the way he is, he definitely has a shout of being in the squad. Um, he's he's uh, yeah, he's excellent really, and um, I said that, that when he when he doesn't play, they miss him and big time, and I don't think they have a. I think he's I think he's signed a two year deal with them last year, so he's on that contract for next season. But again, mm. he's another player that if he continues his form, like I don't see him being in the league for very long. I can see him maybe getting a move over to England or whatever if he, if he continues. Mm. Well, he was at Celtic originally. Yeah. He came back, so uh, either way, um, I think he's fantastic. I think he's probably the best player in the league. Uh, if I'm being honest, uh, I probably actually have my ahead of Jack Brown just the fact that you know you look, he won the league. They're on course to to win the treble or quadruple if you include the Presidents Cup. So um, I think that, that has to be taken note note of as Hopefully well. Not. Well, yeah, for your sake, you, you obviously hope not. Um, but I do think. He, you know, you speak about Gannon, you speak about Shields, and I think there's a core there that are an exceptional, exceptional bunch uh, of players. And without them, 
Dundalk struggle like he, he, and then I go back to what Rory said about two players for every position but I don't think if you take those key players out and bring other players in they struggle without them and I think, think that Michael Duffy is the is the difference maker and he's the reason that why Dundalk have a league in my opinion uh, League 1 but um, if we're going then right wing because we're after mixing the formation yeah. up a little, a little bit um, where will we be going on a right wing perspective Shane? Um, for me well, I've Jack Byrne in, but obviously he's, he's taken up already. Um, I think Junior. I think Dan O'Kelly's done excellent when he when he's yeah. come on for Dundalk. Probably, um, probably not um, started as much. Yeah, as he probably, I mean, probably doesn't have enough game time to, to make a team of the year. Um, well, it'd be interesting to see what you guys have, I suppose, for right wing, considering my uh, my pick's gone with, with with Jack Byrne, and if I was to pick someone else in place, it would probably be Junior. Um, in in on in on the wide wide. Yeah. Player. I personally would probably go for Ronan Finn. I've watched him. He's been drifting in and out. He was a right wing back then, but he's just been an ever present for the for Rovers this year. And I, any time I've watched him, he's been very very good. Um, because of the way I had it, I had uh, Manjo as my as my right wing. I would have had him there to accommodate Bourne as the number ten. Um, but when I think about it, I think I, I've watched a lot of Ronan Finn this year, and I think he's been fantastic. I think Ronan, Ronan Finn's a better player than what he's shown and I think that goes back to the Daryl Leahy kind of argument of setting high such high standards that in I've been disappointed with Ronald Finn not because he's performed badly but because he can do better mm, you know what he's capable yeah, of yeah and, and he should be doing better I think I still think his best position is in in, his advanced, in the advanced midfield role um, although he has done well when he's filled in on the right wing or right wing back or right wing this season I just think that uh it was more for cover than anything else when he originally went out there. I think what started it was the game Oriel where we were without a few mm. players and he, and he had to sit there. Someone had... Furlong made his debut. Yeah, I think. yeah. 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 And, it was uh, like that. That, that was it. And then it kind of went on from there really and he's moved more into the wing and he has done well there this year in fairness. But I just I still think Finn's best position is the uh, is the advanced midfield role because he's shown that in the years he's been in the league and as Shane said, he set such high standard for himself that um, I think that maybe he should be chipping in with more goals but I think when on his day he is one of the best players in the, in the league but just in that in midfield position yeah well I think to Shane's to Shane's point is you're, you're talking about Junior in there he's finished the top scorer in the season uh, in the league sorry I do think it's kind of hard to leave him out because of that uh, accolade I mean Pat Huben finished with a goal less he was probably the best number nine in the league and the fact that he's he's basically taken over as, as the league's top scorer uh, I haven't seen enough of him for, for me to, to put him in person that's what I've seen a lot more of, of Ronan Finn this year and I'm going off what I've seen um, so I've basically set the table up there for you uh, Rory and um, Ryan who you guys are, are going to choose because Shane's gone for a junior and I have absolutely no argument if, if, if you go with that uh, Ronan Finn for me, I would have had Dan Mandro, which I already mentioned, but uh, such is the way that um, the formation's gone, that uh, it's, it's, he's already been in the team as a number 10. Um, I'd go with Junior as well. Um, probably I suppose he's top scorer, but he's, he's scored like a lot of important goals for Derry. Um, he's got them out the fourth place, he's got them to the Europa League qualifiers. Um, both him and David Parkhouse have done really well. Um, but it's just he's he's a raw talent. I think he, like when he got on the when he, when he gets on the ball, if like fans will get off his off their seat, and uh, that's gonna play a player you gonna want to go and watch watch play football. Yeah, my initial pick was Manju, but before we kind of messed up the formation a bit, uh, just on on we he used it, but just on, on Manju, I think he's had he's had a good season. Um, he's he's um. Again, you've seen that with the goals he should do. Maybe the discipline maybe hasn't been great. I think obviously it should have been sent off against Shells. And then he goes on and bangs in two really good goals. Yeah, and, then, and then he and then even against Rovers, the two goals he he, uh, he uh, scored mm -hmm. and missed a penalty as well in that. But um no, I will go for Junior as well now because I just think with the fourteen goals he got this season, any time I've seen him, he's caused Rovers problems. Um I think there was a game where we were two 0 up in Tala and I think he got he got them back into the game and ends up drawing two all and no I just think from from what I've seen again I give Finn, I give Finn an honourable mention as well but I just think for um for Junior top scorer in the league and anything anything from what I've seen he's caused his problems so yeah I go for Junior as well yeah well that's well he's in the team then uh, Junior I think a lot of Derry fans would be happy to at least get one player in although Shane's done his best to <laughs> to get four or five of them in to be fair um he'd be a popular man in Derry but I think look. It, 
the fact his goals tally, uh, I haven't seen enough of him this season to give a proper um, shout for him in my from what I've seen. Uh, I can only vouch for what I've seen at Fiena. I think the way Stephen Bradley sets up his team is there's a lot of uh, alteration. There, there's a lot of rotation in, in between during the game, and I do think that Ronan Fiena when he when he has played on that right hand side, he has been fantastic uh, when I've seen him, but. I mean, he can't really look any further. 14 goals uh, from that wide position. I think he has to get in there. So uh, he's in the he's in the team. Then we're going on to um, our basic number nine, our striker, our centre, centre forward. Personally, myself, I'd be going for Pat Huben. Uh, I just think he's just a total... He's just a... He's just a total centre forward. You, you speak about people scoring goals and he's got 13 goals, but he's also got I think it totally is 19 goals um, in all competitions. He's 13 assists. He does a lot more for the team. And you think of games when when Rover, or sorry, when the Dock were were um, behind Rovers in the league for that um, that that distance early on. He was scoring penalties in the last minute against the likes of Bohemians and stuff like that. Which um, for me, that's what you want from a striker is a, a, a lad that can step up in moments that are crucial and as well as that he works people people say that he doesn't but anytime I've seen him he works tirelessly for the team he never stops hassling defenders uh, he brings other players into play I don't think maybe Michael Duffy would be getting well I think they suit each other so well is that he he brings up Michael Duffy's game and also Michael Duffy brings up Pat Huben's game and I think for me that's why Pat Huben for me, gets that position. Um, Shane? Um, I think this was the toughest one that I, I, I've a player written down here, but I'm still kind of my head on, on 50-50. Like my back four, my goalkeeper, I had no problem picking picking them. Um, just to avoid confusion, I did have Shields slog at holding midfield. I don't think I need to mention Danny Mandreo. Um, he, because I think I originally said Jack Byrne would be number, my number 10, but Danny Mandreo would play off my number nine with Byrne and Duffy wide. And my number nine is, and I'd also like to say I have no affiliation with Derry City Football <laughs> Club, um, but David Parkhouse, for me, gets the, gets the nod. And I think you could ask me in 10 minutes' time and I might say Pat Hoopen. You know, because it, this, it was the most difficult. Um, the team I had with, with Junior being for a sub, say, he didn't make the midfield. And I think Parkhouse has just been, he's come onto the scene, he's, he's got his under-21 call-up up north, and he's just such a shining light and again like listen I don't want to harp on about Derry too much but like Decky Devine signed 21-22 players and he's formed this nucleus of a team and he's formed you know a really consistent impressive unit and I think Parkhouse has led from the front with that that's taking nothing away from Pat Hoven, you know but I just think again it could be a case of going down the, the Ronan Finn line of you know train of thought that you'd want them to see him to do a bit more. At the same time, well, what more do you want to do? He's banging in goals, they've won the league. But I think Georgie Kelly's going to really come on to see next year. I think yeah. that's going to impress him. That might really drive him on even more. Like, But I think there's been a few issues off the pitch where he's signed a contract or not. He's finally got that over the line as well. So I think he can concentrate on his football a bit more. But for me, David Parkhouse has just been, any time I've seen him, he's, he's been exceptional. He's full of energy. Um, and he's young, but he's also composed as well for a young lad, which which is great to see. And I think he's only going to improve as the years go on. Um, and I think it's been an excellent season for him. Yeah, um, Rory. Um, I'm gonna go with Huben, but there's so many other people that I think they can get there as well. Yeah, well, sure, you know how I'm a mess. Um, what I would say about Parkhouse is he only really kind of for me towards a certain part of the season, then kind of turned it on more so as I think Huben's been the whole yeah. season. And I do take what you say about Georgie Kelly. I think. He'll be, you know, chomping at the bit next season. I think he'll do well. Which is the best thing for Huber. Oh yeah, hundred percent, one hundred percent. And you know, I do think maybe a player that that didn't get a lot of credit early on is is before his injury was Dini Corkin as well. At Bowes, uh, he was scoring goals. He scored a big, a big goal penalty at, at um at Talent. Sorry, Brian. Um, but um, before his injury, I know Andre Wright came in, but he was on on course. To, to have a really good season and it was, it was a key for, for, for Bowes having a good start for a player who um, got it in June and he didn't play again he hasn't played since then to have seven goals like it's it's a, it's a good record Um, if you had been there the whole season like who knows we, we might have 
he might have uh, kind of got near a bit, a bit earlier and might have been able to push on. Um, he might have finished more than 14 goals. So this, this I, think he, I, think he, I think he probably would have gone on the, the form that he had and the, and the record. He probably would have uh, been top scorer this season. Um, but as mentioned, I am going to go for Huben. Um, he has been, for his standards, he hasn't kind of hit the heights as he did, especially last season. But comparing him to the rest of the league, he has been above average. Um, but I do want to give out a mention to Parkhouse, uh, Shane picked, and also uh, Romeo Parks from Sligo. Mm, yeah, he's um, been very good, yeah, actually. The goals that he's kind of up with for Sligo, they might be, they might have been in a very different position. Um, he's kind of he's dug them out of some some games, and you know Sligo fans have kind of really taken an affinity to him when he came into the league as a relatively unknown player. Um, and Ronan Cochran as well. There's a yeah. good part- partnership between the two, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm gonna go for Hooven just for the fact that uh, he. He kind of he almost dragged on the hook yeah. and some for some games he picked up like really important last minute winners and got them three points and those two points that that they might have dropped. Yeah, well, really especially important. at the time when when they were were they had that gap between Rovers and Dundalk, um, he was winning games late on to keep the pressure on Rovers. Now, no, uh, Ryan, you're gonna have a say here. So, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll go for I'll go for Bahubin as well. Um, although I think again a special mention to. Special mention to Green because I think eleven goals he got all mm. from open play this season. I think Hoban must Hoban must have got about six or seven from open play. But then you, you mentioned that he scored some late penalties that kind of when when there was that gap there. Yeah. Be okay. But I also mentioned the thirteen assists. Yeah, which yeah needs he to be. brings it. It's more to his game than goals. Um, but again, I reckon Corcoran would have finished top scorer had he been fit. As I mentioned, it was eight goals he was on before. Seven. Seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah seven. I think he was probably on course to finish top scorer. Uh, Green uh, has proved a lot of doubt was wrong at Rovers um, 11 goals this season wrong, I, I, I think by his own admission he should be top scorer in the league um, he's missed some really big chances this season as well I mean it's only kind of towards maybe August he's kind of got his finishing boots on I think but, when when he scored that scream or uh, was it away from home yeah, in Europe yeah, since then well, he's gone up a level yeah yeah. yeah so but um, again by his own admission he would, he should be top scorer with the chances he's had but again with Pahoub and more to his game than goals and like I said there was a contract situation that didn't just go on for a few weeks it went on for a few months and that's bound to kind of have an effect on his performances mm-hmm. as well but I do think he's the best striker in the league and I think he got 13 goals um, so, and again it's, it's not a great return by a player from his standards but again like it's 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 still the second highest in the league, so I'll go for I'll go for Pat Huben. Okay, so that's pretty much Pat Huben is our is our striker. So we're gonna go through the team again. So we've Talbot and goal, we've got right back Sean Gannon, Hor and Grace, um in centre back, and we have left back Dane Massey, I believe. Yeah. Uh then we're going into midfield. Um we're going as a midfield three with uh Mandrea was the as the uh, number ten. Yeah. Which still, uh, I wouldn't have it that way myself. But anyway, uh, Byrne, Shields, Mandreo, and then we have Junior on the right to accommodate him because Michael Duffy is Michael Duffy on the left, and uh, Pat Huben up top. The team would do fairly well, uh, to, to be fair. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I'm sure you, if you're a certain Bias fan, you uh, you won't be happy. But uh, I'm sure Shane will go down very well, people down in Derry. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.